Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to discuss in detail the serverless architect. What my focus is to actually understand if you are a startup, if you are a small business, and if you're starting of thinking, moving into or venturing into cloud, this is something which is going to actually help you like decrease your headache and also save your cost. So let's learn how serverless architect actually can help you scale your cloud infra. Okay, let's try to understand what serverless actually means. So let's again break it down. I have server here and I have less here. Server, obviously we understand what server means. We understand what less means. The problem was, I would say around 15 years ago, I'll just take a 15 years scenario, let's say 2005 or let's say 2010 if I may, when the cloud was there. The biggest problem an individual used to face and even I face that is if you're a small company, if you're a small startup is you have to maintain your whole server. So you have to uh, like initiate the server, you have to install the software if I may, you have to maintain the code, you have to update the patches, you have to worry about the security part of it. Obviously nothing is readable but try to understand. You have to do this. Now the problem is if you are a small team, it gets bit difficult for you to manage everything for a very specific reason you're not able to focus on what is supposed to be done so this becomes a major hurdle towards the development process so back in again i don't remember the year aws came with something which is known as function as a service so what happened you are going to actually write a function if i may you're going to write a function that is it you will upload that function to the cloud and you don't have to worry about the installation of a particular platform which you're going to use, how to uh, update that, how to patch that, how to worry about the security part of it because cloud is taking care of that. And these days, wherever you go, there is not a single company, at least I know of, which is not using serverless. Few of our clients were using, actually they were not using serverless. So what we did, we shifted their bit of infrastructure to serverless, which not only saved their cost, but also helped them scale their infrastructure quite easily. We are going to understand why. Okay, let's try to understand with this example, how serverless architect work. So I'll take an example of a traditional way. What used to happen? I used to write the code. Then I will upload the code in the server. I'll test it. I'll deploy it. Then I'll use it, I'll patch it, I'll update it. Now, forget about, we have to update the software also, infrastructure also, we have to worry about the scale, we have to worry about the traffic, if I may. Again, I do apologize, nothing is readable. Now, how serverless works? Serverless works in a very simple scenario. You just write your code, which is, you're writing a code as a function, that is it. You're going to upload this code to the particular cloud you're using. Major cloud providers are AWS, Microsoft, Azure, if I may. DigitalOcean is also using that. Google Cloud is obviously using that. So you're going to upload this particular function on the cloud provider. And from there, you're going to just run this. After that, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to worry about the deployment part of it. You don't have to worry about the updation of the software of that particular server. You don't have to worry about the scale, if I may, the security, if I may, and the software part, obviously, I have discussed. So what happens? This actually takes a lot of your hard work away from you. Now, obviously, it has some disadvantages also, and I'm going to discuss in detail. But try to understand that this is how it makes your job easier so that if you want to implement something, you can actually do that with the help of serverless architect. So it removes your he headache. And if you're a small business or if you're a small company, it helps you become more productive because it takes away a lot of legwork, if I may. Okay, now when you're going to implement serverless, you will be facing some of the core concepts which you have to understand. So I'm going to discuss in detail, if I may. So first of all is basically execution. Execution is nothing. You are executing whatever is written inside a function. So let's say if the function is saying, if someone uploads a photo in JPEG, you have to convert that into PNG. That is it. So the execution part is simple. If someone triggers that function, you will convert that JPEG image into a PNG file. Second is duration. 
So in what duration this particular function is going to execute and it is going to return either true or false. Now obviously that depends upon what do you want to do, what do you want to return. But ultimately this is the duration by which the function has successfully executed or I should say successfully ran. Then we have something known as cold start. This is basically sort of a benchmark. So let's say your function is running at 6, 01 at 01 am. And it takes around two seconds to start. So 6, 01, 03 am. So this is, I would say, the two second is the duration of cold start. So what happens? This becomes a benchmark. How frequently can you use that? This also means how frequently the function can actually run. Now we have something known as concurrency limit. What is concurrency limit? How many times a single function can run at a single instance? A very simple concept. And finally, the timeout. If the serverless function, if I may, I'm using these terms serverless functions, they are technically same. If I'm using, uh, sorry, if I'm having a function which is actually not executing and it is actually going out to timeout. So this is where you have to understand that this function is not running. And this is what is going to, uh, like you're going to find out what is affecting it and what is the timeout of the function. Or you can also set the timeout of the function so that you're not over executing some stuff. Now you can say Avinash, these days container as a service is quite used. So why should I worry about the server? When you talk about the container, again, I don't have to worry about the infrastructure. I don't have to worry about the software. I don't have to worry about anything. I'll just update the container. I'll install the container in my operating system. I'll upload the code and I will sleep. Well, yes, that sounds pretty cool. But container is something which you have to manage. If the container, I'll give a very simple example. Let's say your container is using Python version 3.4.2 an example now if that particular language has been updated your container needs 3.4.3 in that case you have to do that now you you can always say that yes i can do that automatically but try to understand this is something which has to be done you are the person who is taking care of it and majority of the time this automation does not work because company have this policy of not upgrading something just because it is upgraded you have to test a piece of code you have to manage everything so this is pretty much i would say sort of a disadvantage where containers give you in terms of serverless you don't have to worry about this thing this happens automatically so you once you have uploaded your code it is done you don't have to do anything apart from updating your code that is it okay now let's talk about the benefits i'm going to get with the serverless infrastructure which i was actually talking about you might be worried so first of all the biggest benefit is cost why serverless again i'll, I'll take an infra, uh, example of other things let's say if i talk about if i'm using compute so compute is charged on rp basis if i'm using it or if i'm not using it if i talk about any platform as a service obviously that is charged hourly basis but if i talk about serverless or i should say function as a service it is charged on execution basis so like if i'm if i've executed uh, five seconds worth of functions again i'm going to take a very simple example here so i'm going to be charged for just five seconds not anything extra second thing is scale now since this is serverless i don't have to worry about the scale so cloud provider who is providing me this can actually scale it on its own behalf so i don't have to worry about the infrastructure which is supposed to be pre-built if i may before the execution because this happens automatically now since this thing is already taken care about my productivity increases and i can offload a majority of the work to the serverless infrastructure now even though it has advantage it sounds very fancy but you have to understand you're a small business you're a startup you have to understand there will be some challenges i have discussed with few people and major of the challenges which even i have faced i have actually written there so what is the first challenge lack of control if I talk about software as a service, I have to use something what is being provided. I do not have any say to that. Similarly, I have in function as a service or I should say serverless as a service. I do not get the control. I just control my code. That is it. I cannot control the upgradation, degradation or whatever that is. 
सेकेंड इज सिक्योरिटी टेक्निकली इफ आई टॉक अबाउट सिक्योरिटी सिक्योरिटी विल डिपेंड अपॉन योर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर और आई शुड से योर फंक्शन यू हैव रिटर्न इट विल नॉट डू एनी एक्स्ट्रा वर्क और एनी एक्स्ट्रा लैग लेग वर्क फॉर यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द क्लाउड देन वी हैव लैक ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन टेस्टिंग सपोर्ट सो दिस इज समथिंग विच कैन एक्चुअली trigger some people will say okay no that is something which we need so you have to understand the manual testing the automatic uh, automated testing can be done but if i talk about integration testing it has some challenges obviously we have seen few work around that few tools which are actually helping people to do the integration testing but yes this is something which is still work in progress not yet fully matured if i may then finally <laughs> vendor lock in so basically if you are going to use your server in aws Azure, Google Cloud, Digital Ocean, or whatever that is, you are pretty much locked to that. If you do not decide to move in, whatever pricing they are doing, whatever they are doing, you are pretty much locked in. So you can consider this as a disadvantage, but I consider this as a challenge because obviously there are few cloud providers which have a better serverless functionality, but they have lack of support. So this is something I would say sort of a con part where you have to manage. the pros and the cons together of that particular infrastructure okay so abhinash you have discussed everything about the serverless now i want to understand what are the use cases of serverless so let's try to understand what are the use cases of serverless so first of all it can be used for a trigger based scenario what is a trigger based scenario you are uploading a image on instagram as 8g uh, sorry 8 megabyte of image you have uploaded it will trigger to the instagram that someone has uploaded an image please convert that image into 2 megabyte reduce the size of the image now you are saying avinash you are using the image option a lot because images are one of the most used functionality of serverless compute if i may then building api obviously i don't need any infrastructure for that i can simply implement the apis and i can start working there then we have async processing so majority of the time i don't know if you have seen this but what happens sometimes if i made the payment the processing is still going on if you are a youtuber if you upload some video obviously the processing is happening now i don't want my user to wait i don't want my user to wait so i'm going to provide them uh, sorry i'm going to use a serverless infrastructure and i will use this async processing part here so that i do not stop the user from doing their current work whatever work or i should say whatever processing is supposed to be done that can happen in the background and i can let user use the application the next point is obviously creating some checklist so like let's say if you have some security protocols and if you want to check it you can put that code in the serverless and you can start implementing it how you would be implementing it that is totally different now this is something we actually have helped for our clients so that is why i have included that particular point and finally one of the most used part continuous integration and continuous deployment so let's say if you have a private git repo you can actually implement the serverless technology because obviously this this can work as a, a trigger based task so what you can do like let's say if someone has pushed their code you can push their code you can start the testing part of it and then you can push the code into the deployment server and you can go ahead so this is one of the advantage which you can use with the serverless technology and this is a quite popular feature a lot of company use when they have their tight infrastructure which is quite something which they want to control they don't want to give any other one any access or control over that now i want to mention one thing there are so many tools related to serverless which are available in the market now obviously i will be putting those tools in the description of this particular video so you can check that but if you want any help from our side related to serverless technology or how you want to implement it or how you can monitor how your serverless infrastructure is working for you in that case you can reach us our team can actually help you and we can tell you how you can take advantage of the serverless technology to rapidly get yourself productive and make your team efficient so you can actually scale your infrastructure